It is officially spooky season. So today I'm bringing you a ton of Dollar Tree DIY Halloween inspiration. They are super quick and easy, also so adorable. So be sure to stay tuned so you can see them all come together. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name's Whitney, and on this channel, I love to share all things DIY, whether that's DIY and budget home decor, Cricut projects. I also love sharing wood builds that we do around our house. So if that interests you, be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wit video. And now let's get into the spooky, but not too scary, Chris. First up, we're making this super quick and easy back garland. You need a couple supplies in literally five minutes. So I grabbed these felt shapes from Dollar Tree, but if you can't find them, don't worry. Just grab some black felt and you can cut them yourself. I also grabbed a doll needle and some of the beads out of my stash because I cannot find the elusive Dollar Tree bead garland. But if you can, you could totally use it for this. So I use my doll needle, I put three of my wood beads onto my jute twine and then I use the dowel needle to string up the felt pieces. They're a little bit stiffer, which I like, they will hold up, but you're gonna wanna make sure that when you string it, you put your jute twine behind your bat. Nobody wants that jute twine right across the chest of the bat, so make sure that you go in one side and put your jute twine on the back of your bat. But other than that, you could add as many or as little wood beads as you want. You could dye them, you could paint them black and white. There are a lot of different options. I just want the neutral kind of unfinished wood route, but this looks so good because I left them unfinished to match my pumpkin garland that I made for fall. I think I'm gonna leave them both up with this two tiered look, but this was so easy to put together. Seriously, a couple minutes. I only needed one pack of these bats from Dollar Tree and I've got a few left over for other projects. Staying on the bat train, the second one is so cute. I was inspired by this pumpkin that I saw at TJ Maxx. I didn't take a picture for myself, but I was able to find it online. So here's the inspo. So I took a Dollar Tree infamous orange pumpkin. They have these every year. I've done a ton of projects with these, but I decided to twist off the top. It's just a little toothpick in there for the little stem. And I painted one of them white and one of them black with Waverly chalk paint. I needed two coats of each color on both. So both had two coats just to cover up that bright orange and give it more of a spooky vibe. While those were drying, I decided to cut out some bats and ghosts with my Cricut, but don't worry, you could just use construction paper or cardstock and cut your own. Bats are a pretty simple shape. I just was trying to crank out all these DIYs for you guys, so we had to make it quick. I peeled them off of my mat and I did a variety of bats. I just found this in Cricut Design Space, but I did anywhere from six inches down to one inch wingspans. Then all you have to do is just bend the wings just a little bit with the cardstock and it will give you that 3D effect. And then I'm just adding a teeny bit of hot glue from my low temp glue gun so it's not as hot, it's not gonna melt that kind of styrofoam pumpkin. And then I'm just going through and adding them in a different pattern that I liked. You could do whatever you want, you could do whatever colors you want, but I think this is so fun with a 3D element and I'm gonna display it on this candlestick. To make the ghost version, it's very similar. It's just inverted with the colors. So I did a white stem with a black pumpkin and then I cut out a variety of different ghosts. Again, these are all in Cricut Design Space. I just searched for bat and ghost. Then I sized them different sizes, used that low temp glue and voila. How fun are these? You could also use some double-sided tape and get your kids involved to decorate these. You could make them as whimsy or as spooky as you want, but I absolutely love the bat one. It is the perfect size. This is either gonna live in my Hocus Pocus bathroom, which I'm still working on. I've mentioned it before. That will be being shared in October, but it could also go on my wooden shelves in the living room, which usually is witch-themed as well for October and Halloween. I am so excited. Now in my Dollar Tree fall DIY videos, I shared some free printables and you guys loved them. I mean, loved. I got so many inquiries about it, so we're gonna do them again. The first one is this clipboard display, which is so easy. It's the best way that I like to display my printables other than in a frame. I designed this witch starter pack, watercolors, because you guys know I've been obsessed with that. You just print it out on your printer. I will link all my printer information down below. This is on the 
$89 printer I got at Target. I like it so far. I've printed a ton of stuff and it prints in really good quality as you can see here. Be sure to go down to the link in the description to head over to my blog to get access to all the free files that I will be sharing with you today because we're about to go on a quick little marathon of printables and ideas for you. First one being using these square four x four photo frames. Now you could definitely print out something as a four x four square so that it floats within the glass, but I decided to print something out six and a half by six and a half so that it would essentially be a staging sign. I've used that term before, but I like to have a pattern sometimes behind my worded signs. And so here I just cut out my piece on cardstock stuck it in my frame and I did both a neutral and a full color pattern. Canva.com has a ton of patterns so you could make your own or these will be available for a download for you. Another thing I love for printables are these smaller frames. If you can't find this particular three and a half by five, they've got a lot of different options. You could also do a four by six. These I ended up sizing specifically to the three and a half by five and popped them right in. Now I did a mixture of stager signs as well as text signs here. So this one is a candy theme. I really love the cute little saying on there. I also did a version of Bats and Hocus Pocus Broom Co here. And then I've got a couple other options. I have seven in total for this particular size. So like I said, that is all linked over on my blog. All you gotta do is print these out, pop them in, and you will be festive in no time. So I mentioned I've got a couple different areas that are witch themed throughout my house and I don't really have any books like these. So I wanted to make some easy Dollar Tree spell books. So I found these three books at Dollar Tree. So they're obviously a dollar a piece, which they are great hardcover solid books. So I like to use the hardcover books for these. They stand up on their own a lot better than the soft cover, but if you can't find it, you can definitely make the soft cover work. I took off the sleeves off of all of the books and then it was time to paint. This Bachelor Nation one was already black, which was awesome, so I just had to paint the spine. I gave it three coats of some chalk paint. Because the chalk paint is thick, it's gonna seep into the letters that are embossed onto the book so that it looks more of like a flat spine rather than printed that it says Bachelor Nation. The other two books, I painted the front, the back, the spine, and I also opened up the book to paint the edges here of the last page. That way you don't see those colors when they are going to be kind of set up on the shelf. I let those completely dry and then I grabbed a makeup sponge with just some light gray paint. I dropped it and then I continued on painting. I'm just dabbing this on, no rhyme or reason. I just want it to look a little weathered. You could use whatever color you want here. This is just inspiration. So then I thought I was going to write with gold lettering. I did it and I did not like it. So then I just went in with a white Arteza acrylic marker. I've been loving these. So I ended up just painting right over the gold, restamping the kind of gray paint. And then I went back in with white to do broom care on this last book. I wrote them this way so that they could either be set up on their side or they could be stacked like coffee table books. And then my last step was to just tie them up with some jute twine to kind of keep them together as a set. If you're worried about them falling over and there's no way that you're going to want to display them other than this way, you can hot glue the different covers together so that they stay as a set. I wanted to be able to have some freedom with arrangements, so I left it like this. If you don't like your handwriting, you could definitely cut out a Cricut decal if you have a machine or you could use some of Dollar Tree stickers. There's a lot of different options, but I just want the freehand route here and I absolutely love these. Not sure where these are going to live either, but you're going to have to stick around to find out. You guys know I love a good garland, so we're going to have a second one in this video. And this one is so festive, so fun for Halloween. This is so fun for kids. This would also be great classroom decor if you are a teacher. So we're going to start by making some candy corn tassels. Now, I have some candy corn tassel earrings I wore in the past couple videos, and I got so many questions on where they came from. They're from Kohl's. I wore them in this open. I will link them down below. But that inspired me to make these. So I'm starting with wrapping some yellow yarn that I got from Walmart because I had it from a previous project, but you can find this all at Dollar Tree. Wrapping it around this wood round or something of similar size 25 times, trimming the end, and then taking an additional piece of yarn and tying the top of it. So you're going to just tie one part of your loop. Then I'm going to take the orange and I'm going to repeat the same step, only instead of 25 times around, I'm going to do 35.
Then for the white, same thing, but instead of the 35 or the 25, I'm gonna do 45. So you're doing 10 more loops per color up the candy corn, and you'll see why in a second. Once I have all my yarn wrapped and done, I'm going to trim the ends of the yellowy color so that it has all the little fringes. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the orange, but I'm also gonna trim it a little bit. Cause if I leave it the same length as the yellow, you're not gonna be able to see the yellow. So then I took my two ends of my yellow that I tied together and I'm using that to loop it around the orange so that I've got a two layered tassel. I'm just gonna tie it just like how I did the circle and then trim anywhere that I need to. Give it a good fluff, make sure your orange is covering your yellow and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the white. You're gonna wanna make sure you trim it a little bit more than you trimmed the orange again so that you can see the two colors underneath. Then I'm taking that same two pieces of yellow yarn and I'm tying it around the white as well. Now the reason that you want to increase your amount of times that you loop around your object, in my case it was this wood round, is so that you have more yarn to cover the layer below it. That's how you're going to get this white kind of head to your tassel and it's going to look like a candy corn. Then my last step was to take some white yarn, wrap it around to create a head for the tassel, and then give it like three or four good knots so it stays. Then I just trimmed those so that they kind of join in with the fringe and you've got a really fun, cute little candy corn tassel. Now my cute little pumpkin little flag banners started out as these treat bags. So you get a pack of four for a dollar at so Dollar Tree has a pack of four for $1, and so I went through and cut off the fronts of all four of these bags so that I had just like a pumpkin flag. Get rid of any of the seams, and then I just used a little Sharpie marker to create a hole for me to hang it. So you're gonna put a line of hot glue. Don't touch your little Sharpie or pencil, whatever you're using. Just use it as a space holder. Then that way when you push over the top to create a little hole, you can just pull it right out. Then you've got a little hole to hook it to your twine for your banner. I wanted to use the back orange pieces, so the pieces that I cut off of my treat sacks. I cut some scrap strips from that, as well as some strips. I also cut some strips of this really pretty spiderweb ribbon that's also from Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. Then I did the same process as before. I used my doll needle and some jute twine. I did two wood beads, then a pumpkin, three wood beads and then a pumpkin and continued on. And then in between those beads, I tied on some of my candy corns as well as tying on some of the scrap orange fabric along with some of that spider web stuff to give it a little bit of texture. This is where you can have total creative freedom, do whatever pattern that you want, whatever colors that you want. This is just what looked good to me. Before I cut my jute twine, I made sure to give it plenty of slack so that when I figure out where I'm going to put it, I have enough string on either side to hook it to the ends. Here's what it looks like. Like I said, this is super fun and festive. It definitely feels like Halloween and I have to figure out where this is going to go up in our house come October. Another idea to use those really fun candy cane tassels are on the end of some farmhouse beads. So you've seen me do these a lot before. They're pretty easy to do. I'm grabbing that dowel needle again, which is a six inch needle that I use to string up things. For this one, I'm doing about 15 to 20 unfinished wood beads. This pack came from Michael's, but I like to buy them normally on Amazon. These are just extras that I had. I will link the multi-pack I always buy off Amazon down below if you're interested. Then I just took a witch's hat, which is a little ornament that Dollar Tree sells. They have them in a pack of eight. I just painted one black, tied it on, and then I added the tassel to the other end, but not before I was assisted by my little assistant. If you could kind of see up at the top, he's got some Mickey pajamas. If you've got kids, I found them at Walmart. They are super affordable and so cute for Halloween. Then once it was all tied on, I had a really fun and festive farmhouse strand. I also did one of Dollar Tree's little ghosts. I painted it white, added some little ticky marks around the outside to give it a cutesy feel. I wrote trick or treat, added a couple lines with my paint markers, and then I finished that one off as well with a candy corn tassel. 
these orange beads I dyed in a previous video, so these are just leftovers that I had. I will link that video for you if you're interested in seeing how I like to dye my beads versus having to hand paint them. Up next is a Halloween take on this black sign. If you've seen my recent Cricut video for fall with Dollar Tree items, I used this and I did Hey Pumpkin and Autumn Leaves. For this one, I wanted to do the same look but say Happy Halloween as well as a little Adam's Family vibe. So this Happy Halloween will be a free cut file over on my blog. Link is down in the description. I also have a Canva template for you if you would like to create the Adam's Family part of the sign with your family's last name. I applied this with my Expressions Vinyl Transfer Tape and then I applied it to either side of the sign. So here is the Happy Halloween version. It goes super well with that little bat pumpkin I shared earlier. It makes for a really nice little vignette. I also like the little pumpkin up at the top. And then here is the Adams Family version. Like I said, I have one where you can add your family's last name to the bottom. So for example, the Johnson family at the bottom. This next one is really fun for decor, but it would also be fun if you've got some artistic kids to create some decor for their room. So this is the adult part, so you're going to have to prep this if you're doing this with kids, but grab two of these pumpkins and then use something to cut them in half. I'm using my miter box that I got off Amazon. It was a pretty easy process to chop it in half. Then I removed the top little stem as well as the raffia and used some sandpaper to get rid of the glitter as well as a heat gun to get rid of the stickers because this back is now going to become the front. Then I painted the entire, all the sides and the back and everything with some orange chalk paint. This is called pumpkin. And then when they were dry, I had to do a little bit of finagling to figure out where I wanted my pumpkins to sit. Now, if you see here, I cut mine not exactly down the center when I did them, and I wanted the different sizes of pumpkins, but if you want them to be symmetric, you're gonna wanna make sure to measure. I didn't want the symmetry, so I just kinda cut where I felt. I cut with my heart, essentially. <laughs> Once those were all set up with some hot glue, then I just went onto Pinterest and found some images of some different pumpkin faces, and then I used my acrylic paint marker to go through and just kind of recreate what I saw and color it in. You could also do this with a Sharpie. You don't have to have an acrylic marker. I just really like these because the color is really intense and they're easy to draw with. Then to give all four of them stems, because I only had two from the two pumpkins originally, I just had some of these Dollar Tree cubes. I did my faux staining technique with the antique wax. I put it on like paint, wiped it off like stain, and then when they were dry, I just hot glued them to the tops of my pumpkins to create my little jack-o'-lantern pumpkin patch. Then to give it a little bit more texture, I just used some jute twine across the top of all of them. I wrapped it around and tied it. And then I had these really fun and cute pumpkins. I could see this being awesome for kids to, you know, draw the different faces. It would be a really fun project. It could also be cute if you're a grandparent and you could give each of your grandkids one of these small pieces, have them draw a face, and then you could hook them together. Ton of different activities with this one. Another idea for those fun cutouts that Dollar Tree has is just to paint them and frame them to make a sign. So this was made with those create your own ornaments, one of the hats, as well as just a random square sign you can find at Dollar Tree. It doesn't have to be this particular one, I just grabbed this one. The first thing I did was use some wood filler to fill the hole at the top of the hat because I wasn't hanging it from anything. You just want to push a bunch in there like this, let it dry, and then sand it down flat. Also if you're not familiar with sandpaper or anything, you can get one of these blocks at Dollar Tree. Here's what it'll look like when you're done. Then I just used some brute force, actually just kidding, it wasn't that hard to get this apart, but I pushed off the back of the sign, removed any of the little pieces of the you're perfect, and then I also got rid of the little hanger on the back because I won't need that. I popped off the cat face, you can get rid of that, and then I also used a flathead screwdriver to get off this little kind of raised piece because I knew I wanted to reuse it for the hat. Once I got all the remnants of the cat sign as well as the sticker off the back, 
I painted the frame, the back of the back, so what is going to be facing outward, as well as the hat all black. And then I painted the front of the sign that's going to face forward and be the backdrop for the hat white. Once it dried, I used my little piece that I painted black to raise up the hat. I used some hot glue to reassemble the back of the sign to the sign, and then I hot glued my hat right there in the center. I really like the simplicity of this because then you can put it with other colors or other signs and it's not too busy and I've got a lot of signs with wording on it already. That was another reason why I decided to do this candy corn little mason jar without any words. It's a nice pattern, a nice stager and it looks really well and it looks really great with this hat. To do this I just grabbed one of these Dollar Tree signs. Dollar Tree also has some mason jar shapes in their crafter square year round so you could also do this on one of those. They're metal but you could mod podge onto it. I cut a piece that would fit my little sign that I removed all of the glitter off of and then I just added some Mod Podge to it, pushed down my fabric and then I was going to take the edges of the fabric and wrap it around to the back but I didn't cut it long enough and so I had to punt at this point which was no problem. I just went around the outside, trimmed off the excess fabric and then I went over the top with some more Mod Podge to seal it all down. I replaced the little top with some hot glue so I had that metal piece and then I also wrapped it with some baker's twine that was orange and yellow to match the candy corn. Also the fabric itself is from Dollar Tree but you can also find some really cute seasonal ones from places like Walmart, the Target Dollar Spot or you could go to a Hobby Lobby or Joann's. I know I say it every video, but I truly mean it. Thank you so much for watching. If you love my content and have some crafty friends, be sure to share the videos with them, tag them over on my Instagram and share the projects with them. That is the best way that you can support my channel. And thank you for leaving such kind comments on every video. I love connecting with you guys. I read all of the comments. So drop a line down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.